eight rules for beginning your class. One, get there early, at least five or ten minutes early. Get your brain in the right zone. Listen to your music, plan your steps, make sure the microphone and stereo are working properly. You have your playlist all ready to go so that you are ready and on. The other good thing about getting there even earlier, 15 minutes, 10 minutes early, then you have time to get your brain in order. And then the five minutes before class, you can be talking to your students, <laughs> answering their questions, helping them get ready for class. So if you can get there early, early, not only can you get yourself ready, you can then get them ready and still be ready to go at the right time. Don't apologize. Number two, don't apologize. I don't care how little you've taught, how little you've danced, whatever. Don't get up there and say, well, I, I know that I'm not really very good at this, but I, or I, I'm not really a teacher, or I'm sorry that it's me today instead of this other person. Um, don't apologize. It's not gonna help. It is good, and this is rule number three, to connect to your students. Connecting can be learn all of their names. Always good. Connecting can be make eye contact as you're talking. Connecting can be just make sure that you um, give that sort of friendly vibe from the very beginning, that you're not so busy working on your own steps that you forget to kind of look at who's in the room and notice, oh wait, that person's brand new, maybe I'll go talk to them, or that person looks confused or upset, I'll go help them. So connecting to your students is what's gonna make them enjoy the hour and come back for more. And part of connecting can be um, showing your own vulnerability or nervousness. I say this because I think it's a little bit different than apologizing. So I've seen some teachers that are great, famous teachers who, even when they get up on stage, they'll say, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, I, I'm just so excited to be here, and I, there's so many of you, and I really hope you're gonna like what I'm gonna do, and uh, I've prepared all this stuff for you, and I'm, I just can't believe how nervous I am to be here with all of you, or, or whatever, they're, they're exposing their own vulnerability. I don't necessarily do that. I've seen it good, used to very good effect, and the people in the room, you can feel their, their heart sort of open to that person because that person has exposed themselves as another normal, nervous human being. So, same sort of thing, making mistakes sometimes is great because it makes you look very human. <laughs> and your students really appreciate that because um, they want you to be good, they want you to be a good dancer, they want you to be better than them, they want you to be a great teacher, but if you're always perfect, they don't feel as connected to you as if you show them that you're a real person with, you know, good days and bad days and problems and mistakes and all these things that make us feel connected to each other as real people. So connect in any way possible. Number four, rituals. Rituals are good. Uh, if you always start your class with a certain something, especially a meditative type class, then every time they come in, there's this certain beginning. Humans love rituals makes them feel comfortable, makes them feel confident that they know what's going on, that they're in control. Um, so sometimes having a beginning ritual, the class always starts a certain way, can help people feel comfortable and confident. You don't wanna do it forever, people can get bored, but at least for a while, a ritual can be a good thing for helping begin a class each time smoothly. Or maybe you have a ritual like you always begin with a shine step in the beginning. But it's a little different each week, but you always start that way before you go on to the other stuff. So rituals like that can be useful. Number five, always introduce yourself by name and always introduce any TAs, assistants, helpers that you have in the class. Especially if they're gonna be making corrections to the students during the class, you wanna make sure that you point them out as such you say, that person is a TA, they're gonna help you, they might come around and correct you, and that's okay because otherwise the students feel very off-put. Here's this random person telling them what to do, who are they? Um, so make sure that you always introduce your TAs by name, introduce yourself by name. It's amazing how many people don't know your name, even though they signed up for the class with you. So make sure to do that each time at the beginning. Um, ask them to always introduce themselves to each other, before class, during class, after class. A lot of time in the middle of class, I'll take a break. I know I'm supposed to be talking about beginnings. Make a circle, get everyone to introduce themselves. The more people connect, the more they'll come back to class, the more they'll enjoy the class. Uh, tell them at the beginning, I don't know what number I'm on. 
<laughs> number seven, tell them that it's going to be easy and fun and worth it. I know I've said that before, but just make sure that you really project to them that they're going to have a great time and they're going to get it. There's nothing worse than telling them at the beginning, oh, this dance is really hard. I, I've been studying for 10 years and I still don't get it. And well, good luck, you know, because they, then they're, they're going to worry and worry makes them learn slower. Last but not least, get to it. So even though I'm, I'm talking all this stuff about how to begin your class, don't take 10, 15 minutes to begin. Three minutes to begin. And then get to it. Try to get into your material as quickly as possible. There you go. That's my top eight tips on how to start your class.